Come on, I know it's been a rough 48 hours of building and roboting and hopefully not blowing up with the dragon bot. Um, but now we have the greatest part of RobotsConf, the RobotsConf Science Fair. Is everyone ready? Is that really all you have? Is everyone ready? All right. So I'm getting a little bit mic'd up. Sorry about how discombobulated it is. Let's talk about what you're fighting for here in the science fair. Everybody's a winner, first and foremost, but some are more winners than others. <laughs> is that a robot? Um, we have fashioned medals for the people who will be decided the science fair winners. Your domain experts and the speakers and the staff who have helped make this wonderful event, as awesome as it is, uh, are your deciderers. They will be de making decisions about who shall win the coveted, but a little bit not quite great printed medallion. medallion. Uh, the, the rules for the science fair are as follows. I'm going to ask a line and don't all run up at the same time. Just everyone stay seated. In order to make this a rather rapid progression, we're going to use the handheld mic for you to explain name and project. Keep it to about two minutes. Okay? Show, don't code. The, you're going to want to put your stuff here, where, where the coffee is, so that way it can be on the screens. Um, what I'm going to ask is that we form two lines, one on that side, one on that side. Only three people in a line. When, we, when one of them comes up, someone else please take their place in the queue. Understand? I know it's multi-threaded and that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, nice microphone. So. We will have a couple that, yes, Francis, I love you. Uh, the, uh, that is a great question, Francis. Francis asked, does it need to be complete? No. The winners of the medals of RobotsConf exhibit the ethos that is RobotsConf, which is experiment, try, do. It is not necessarily complete. It is about creating, about making, about taking chances. So, do not be afraid, do not be worried. You're among friends, you're among people who have built robots all day right next to you. We all understand the pain, the anger, the sometimes explosive techniques of capacitors. So, this is your chance to show off. This is your chance to present to everyone else what you've done. This is your time. So let's form three people over here, three people over here. I'm going to preempt two talks in the beginning. Uh, Jonah, you're, come on up. Uh, Derek, come on up. Derek's got to help tear down the other side with Matt's help. So um, we're not really good at following directions, so I need three bodies over there. Peoples, humans. Greetings. Uh, so I've been playing with Name. the Derek Lindahl. Um, I've been playing with the Tessel, and I do not have a robot, but what I do have is a robot accessory, which is laser tag. It's okay. So if I press this button, hopefully it will work. So as you can see on the left, this board is firing a uh, infrared encoded oh. data packet which is then transmitted to the other Tessel, which is detecting it, knowing that it's player one on the red team, and he got hit. So it's reducing his hit points anytime it hits. And because eventually he will die, uh, I connected, so I wanted to make this fancy, and I tried to get audio, which Tessel supports with MP3s, 
but I only had five minutes to do it. I couldn't figure it out real quick. So then I tried to get it on my Pebble, but they have that stuff coming out, but it's not out yet. So I went with my room key and an RFID reader. So when you hit it, the RFID key, it restores the hit points. So it's a health pack. And then when you shoot, you can see he went from 40 back to 100, and then he got hit. So now he's down to 90. Uh, the end goal is to put these on node bots and quadcopters so that we can okay. shoot at each other. And that would be awesome. Not That's all I got. Thank you. So this is Malbot. Um, it's a Spark Core based sumo bot platform with a tail that wags um, and a meowing sensor. Um, so it's actually got several different ways that you can control it. So key press, uh, a REST API, a socket IO GUI, a Pebble app, and Twitter. Um, but right now I've got the, the Pebble hooked up. So I'll show you. Oh, my name's Willa Riggins. Sorry. Um, so it's just going left right now. And I promise this is not a servo dying, it's meowing. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and that's it. Hello, my name is James. Uh, this is my first robots conf. Um, all right, so today, uh, during the weekend, I wanted to learn how to use this uh, Bioloid kit, how the servos work together, and eventually develop um, uh, programs for this using C. And now I can actually go through and control this guy through the uh, computer interface. And he can, this is a uh, quadruped design using wheels, and he can turn and get a variety of motions going on. So, and that's what I did this weekend. Hey, I'm Jasmine, and before RobotsConf, I hated web dev with a passion. I would only work on like uh, client side things that didn't involve talking to the internet or networking at all. But this weekend I worked with uh, Tom and Matt from Electric Imp and we got this uh, sumo bot talking to uh, the network and if you tweet at it, it will move. But I wanted to take it to the next level and uh, add some flair to it. So uh, with Matt, he wrote a script that actually launches um, the out plays a YouTube video of Eye of the Tiger, and our two bots actually dance simultaneously to Eye of the Tiger. So there's a video that I'll, uh, I think he's going to tweet out later, but I can't show it today. But I don't hate web dev. Uh, the internet is a tricky beast, but it's also magic. So thank you. Next. Ah, uh, this is, uh, we are now live outside. So, someone already told? Okay. Yes. Yeah, try now. Alright. Yeah, so there we go. Wait, have you built? A sumo bot which on top of phone, bottles, and cardboard that has little antennae sticking out of its head, basically. And what are you using to steer it? I'm using a Wi-Fi to and an Arduino. Be able to steer it. And you it. and you printed your own uh, your own rudders, right? Yeah, we printed the paddle wheels, but they weren't big enough. That's what it was done. Yeah. And they're clapping for you. So this little unassuming device here is because when I was going to robots conf, I got in the taxi and I said, oh shit, did I leave my garage door opener? I don't know if you've ever done that before, so you're at your, your garage is there and you don't know if I left it open or closed, so I wanted some way to actually remotely close and open my garage door. So basically what I've got now is I've got a pebble, and when I press 
this that actually throws an, an actuator, actually it's a remote switch, right? So it turns it up, up or down, and this actually closes it again, close it off, and then you've got a little reader here, which is a potentiometer, which is this, to simulate what actually measuring on the door, and you press on your phone, on your little device, and it'll show you, if you can see that, light up a little bit. It just basically draws where the door is. It sort of animates as it goes up or down. And that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys. Uh, hello, everybody, friends. Uh, I'm Anthony, and this is Wes, and we built EdgeBot. And so this is a bot that theoretically might follow the edge around the table autonomously. Uh, this worked at least once, so it might work again. So the, the way it works is it has a magnet there and it detects like when the magnet gets too close and then it's just say, okay, I should turn more toward the inside, otherwise it just kind of goes straight. So pretty basic, but thanks. All right, and we take you out outdoors to an epic node rocket. Oh, oh they are? Okay. Nice. Come on up. So we set everything up and we forgot to attach the parachute to the rocket. All right. You ready? Yeah, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Two, one. Woo! So the rocket is right here. Yeah. And that's the parachute. Hi, guys. My name is Chris. Um, this is my first robots conf, first time working with robotics or anything of the sort. Uh, this is my robot, his name is Johnny High Five. He's got some uh, 3D printed components, the hand, the arms. Uh, he's got two servos, so he's got a sort of shoulder joint and elbow. And um, I'll just hook it up right now. Would anyone like to give the robot a high five? We have a volunteer over there. Oh, okay. Who? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Matt. Um, obviously, I did not build the robot here. I've been building it at home as a side project, but I did build a control with the Mayo for it um, while I was here. Um, so I used Android for that. So the controls are, if you pull back, that basically tells it where your hand position is, and then it uses that to tell relatively where your hand moved. So the Mayo is, uh, it's looking at my muscles as they move. Um, they, yeah, it's still going. It was supposed to stop. Um, but it's very new, and the API doesn't always recognize your gestures quite right. Um, they're working on that. But that was that. I just wanted to try it again to see if it would actually work, and it did, so. It, the app sat in my pocket in the line, and it was trying. The robot was trying to take off when I was in line, so I had to reset it, basically take it off. Well, thank you very much. Hey everyone, I'm Vince Allen, and uh, this is a fully 3D printed sumo bot. I went to a Node uh, Nodebots meetup in San Francisco. I left and didn't take a sumo bot kit with me, so I went home and printed it out and brought it here. I had two goals. I wanted to control it with XB, um, so be fully wireless, but I also wanted it to, um, to make barking sounds. So um, what it's, what's going on here? Turn it off. 
So there's a, there's a Raspberry Pi there that's hitting the Freesound API. So there's just a Node app that's um, pulling down one of 1,600 dog sounds you can pull down from Freesound. <laughs> and it's doing them sequentially. So, <laughs> so the idea was just to have this, this bot you know, run around and, and, and kind of bark around the house. Um, I thought that like a next step, you could put a distance sensor on it so that like, it would bark when you kind of came up on it or something like that. But I can prove that it actually drives too. And we're here to show off TankBot. Uh, this is a sumo bot, bot that we created um, here on site to uh, compete in the competition. Um, I had one goal for this conference. I wanted to learn how to control a robot over Bluetooth low energy. And what was the goal you had, Sam? Victory. Victory. OK, well, uh, we got it to work over Bluetooth low energy. We got close on the victory, but not quite. So one of the things I just wanted to call out was, um, let's see if you can see that there. I uh, found this at the conference. Uh, it's called a Little Blue Bean, and that's the controller here. It's basically an Arduino with VLE built in, and it worked really beautifully for us. Did a great job. Um, and the reason that I wanted to use Bluetooth is because in the past, I've made robots that were controlled by Wi-Fi, and didn't work out so well for me. Uh, so I figured I'd get something that was maybe a little less, you know, cloudish. So, Sam, you have anything you want to add? Well, firstly, I'd like to thank the rest of my team. Uh, Andrea and Brian, I'm sure they're out there somewhere. My name is Jamie Zaffron, and I have a total mess. Um, I wanted to at least show something by the time I was done here. I spent yesterday struggling with a spark core and um, failing mightily. I discovered how to crash them really well, though. Um, what I have here is kind of a replica of a ThinkGeek sun or moon jar. They are pretty, they charge solar, they show one color, and they do absolutely nothing. So what I wanted to do is take a handful of NeoPixels and a solar cell to charge it with, although that's unplugged right now, and be able to blow it out. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm ZQ. This is Nikolai, and we were helping out the Node robot, robots, uh, Node rockets guys. Um, that's a rocket that has no node in it. And that's a gamepad which we did not make there. But uh, we hooked up the gamepad to the launch control system, so it's a lot more fun when you can actually trigger a launch rather than hitting a tiny, tiny button on it. Uh, yeah, and we watched the parachute failures, so that was fun. And I helped debug things. <laughs> So my name's David Rezegi, and I was going to make, uh, the idea was like dueling banjos, but with bananas. So I guess dueling bananjos was the name. Um, so I've got um, a makey-makey banana piano hooked up that's sending keys that I'm listening for in Node.js. And I'm passing that along to a piezo using Johnny Five to play the tunes as you hit it. But I'm also uh, recording the timings. And then I have a little pan tilt zoom mount with two servos that then tries to replay what you tapped out. So it's sort of like a reverse Simon game, I guess. So let me try to play this here. One, one more, I practice a song. Hang on. Giles, and I don't actually, uh, I can't really demo it because I think they put the drones away, 
but I just wanted to tell you all that yesterday um, I brought a Leap Motion, and with uh, the Leap JS, uh, you know, with Node.js and the AR drone uh, library with Node.js, I got it so that if I put my hand over the Leap Motion, the drone would take off, pull it away, it would fall, and uh, then I got it to like detect why, so that if I lifted it up, it would just keep going up till it got to the ceiling, and then if I pulled it away, um, it would not crash. It would actually just sort of like land peacefully, and that that's pretty much it. So. So this is my first robots con, first time making any robots, and uh, as of. 1 a.m. this morning, I had nothing, couldn't get a servo to stop, uh, let alone go how I wanted it. And by this afternoon, I was able to do leap motion and have proportional steering and, and uh, going forward and backwards. And uh, I owe it all to uh, the people sitting at my table who helped me a lot uh, when I ran into problems. But I just want to you know, say, this is awesome. I'm glad I was able to come and uh, I've learned a lot. Thanks. I'm Tony, this is Kyle. This is our first RobotsCon. So this is RetreatBot. Um, we wanted to compete, but he didn't get done uh, fast enough. But uh, he was going to retreat anyway, so uh, not that big of a deal. Um, he's controlled via a web interface, which you can't really see too well, so it doesn't matter. But um, And then he plays sound as well. So. Things. <laughs> Soundtrack. All right, that's it. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andrew. Um, so this is a simple bot, which is kind of similar to a Pavel bot, um, and we use these in Australia for kind of teaching on Node Bots days. So we've been sort of a lot of these pieces. Well, everything came with me from Australia. Uh, and basically what we've started doing uh, and have got kind of work in today is really making uh, a simple bot or a kind of sumo bot type thing that's uh, pretty much entirely self-contained. So as most of you have been aware, um, there's been some pretty serious Wi-Fi issues, but when you're dealing with, with Node and stuff like that, Bluetooth and some of the other solutions are not particularly good. Wi-Fi is still a good option. Uh, and so what this does is, because it's running a Raspberry Pi, it detects if it can get on the network, which has been a huge problem over the last couple of days. And if it can't get on or if it can't find it, it does what like a, a AR drone does. So it will spin up its own host AP, and, uh, and then you can just connect your laptop or your phone or whatever to the device and start driving around. So unlike most of the issues that we've been having over the last 48 hours with Wi-Fi, uh, you can just connect from here to here, and because it's nice and close range, it's just going to work. So you can uh, just drive him around and work on your own little network, and potentially have a whole stack of these all working together. Uh, and this is this is kind of we got this going today, so that's pretty cool. So yeah. So, so we've not been able to bring our bot inside, but I, uh, we did get a video off, so maybe I can get this into the screen. Does that work? <laughs> so my, uh, my partners in this are either next door or gone to the store to get more hairspray. But uh, the bar has been lifted. If, uh, if the robots don't have competition next year with fire, uh, we've, d we've dropped the ball somewhere. A hairspray and a servo, by the way, is going to cost you five bucks, so save your money. Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine McAuliffe. And uh, thanks to the Lilzabot guys, I made a little universe, um, a little ecosystem of 3D printed things for the pebble. So here we have just a really simple stand. Um, I actually 3D printed a wristband that kind of clasped together. And then this is a little charger. So you 
can just so you can just like put it in the wall and it just sits and charges. There you go. Uh, I'm Chris Abrams, and uh, this is a boat, and it floats. Um, I didn't know anything about electronics. I didn't know what a breadboard was before I came here uh, this weekend, so I wanted to say thanks to everyone who helped me um, figure this out, and special thanks to Sarah. I never would have gotten the engines turning on without you. This is an uh, intelligent pocket protector. And uh, uh, I'll have to be completely honest, I did not build him here, but I would not have built him at all if I hadn't been here yes, last year. Uh, I knew nothing about microprocessors or 3D printing. Um, he has a life of his own. Uh, I've done demos, uh, uh, and all I can do is kind of get him to squeak something right now. See, he says... Exist yeah, he's got a real attitude. What am yeah. I, you're talking parrot? Yes. And normally a little parrot comes on and his beak moves. Okay? Uh, so uh, the point I want to make is um, he has uh, lots of microprocessors and they're talking to each other and it's crufty, uh, but it does Bluetooth. So I can talk to it from Google Glass. And his name, Rimp, Mr. Rimp, R I M P, stands for Robot in My Pocket. Uh, which is after Angel in My Pocket, which was a movie with Andy Griffith about an angel that lived in a pocket and helped families out of difficult circumstances. And it's for pediatricians and people who work in children's hospitals to uh, entertain children in arduous circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm give you a little detail here. Okay. And uh, so... And there's version, two, that's ver ver the next version. You can see how it's a lot smaller. Uh, and um, that's part of the reason I was here, was to find, uh, to get advice. I went from table to table to table, software architecture, uh, materials, microprocessors, uh, interaction, uh, and I have a long list of things that I hope to show next year. Thank you. All right, so this is Stickbot, and he accepts the challenge that has been placed before him. Um, I, yeah, his, I, had a, I had a problem with his battery, so I addressed that, and, and you can kind of see it there. I took one out, so he's not wasting batteries, but duct tape does wonders. And the key was weapons and maneuverability with the uh, gamepad API. And then um, I also have one more that I've just been kind of playing with, and I was hacking on him, trying to get him to work, but he's not quite working yet. It's basically going to be a self-balancing two-wheeled robot. Um, and he's, you can see up here that he's using a micro view and he's outputting all the accelerometer data and like as I turn him, um, that's what's gonna control basically the motors moving forward and backwards. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Yes. One more, oh, just one more. Well, wait, there's more, all right. There we are, I see more now. Okay, hey guys, uh, I'm Diego. This is my first time at RobotsConf. Uh, I built this node rocket. We actually launched it in the morning and it crashed very badly. Uh, but the good news is like it's, it was, I was able to rebuild it. Um, the, the Raspberry Pi, it was damaged, but not, it's not so bad. So I hope that the second part of the story is we can be launched again and hopefully survive. So thank you. All right, we have Francis. Okay, I guess we have a whole fleet of people coming up. Francis is a little bit scared. Yeah. All right, and then I think we want to announce the winners of the science fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have an honorable mention. Um, I'll, I'll throw that out first. The AP Sumo bot that turns into a Wi-Fi access point. That is awesome and incredibly helpful. Um, I'm going to look for that online later. <laughs> Give me one of these. Yesterday I met a young man who had never done more than plug a, an item into a wall uh, to use electricity. That was the extent of his experience, or at least that's what he led me to believe anyway. Today, he came up here and he demonstrated a robot that high-fived you after singing you a song. So Christopher, where are you? 
You're not even in here. What? Where is he? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? What? Johnny Five, High Five Bot. Come on. What? Really? Uh, all right, anyway. So, Christopher would have gotten this. We'll mail it to him. To this Christopher. All right. Um, it wasn't exactly a robot, but Raquel told us what robots were, and robots are computer-controlled hardware. And um, so I had, like, laser tag. I think it's Derek. I the laser tag bot come up. Uh, Derek, he's packing. He, if you can hear my voice, I really liked what it did. I think it will enable all of us to play games together. We can build our own bots and still interact. So you get a medal. Haha, I know my person's in here. So we had a very, very interesting entry um, where you played music and with bananas, and the robot played the music back to you on the bananas. So this award goes to Dueling Bananjos. <laughs> oh, you're eating your instrument. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> Congratulations. And so uh, this next project is one that, uh, you know, kind of swept the competition away, uh, quite literally tossed it over the edge. So where is uh, Stickbot? And Kevin, are you in here? There's Kevin. So um, we had another person who had uh, not done a lot of hardware and built something really cool. And um, I'm not saying cats are better than dogs, but this award goes to Meowbot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Um, last but not least, by unanimous vote, uh, we have Jonah's boat. Um, this boat is a completely new design for node boats. It's the first one that we've had that was propeller powered with servos as opposed to having these like prefabbed motor pods. Um, and it was also really amazing to have a design that combined a boat with the sumo kits. So congratulations. Good job, Jonah. Forgot one, or at least they came back. Here, yeah. Francis. Woo. Francis, you get you. Now he has to go get his picture taken. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, thank you, everyone else. Great job at the science fair. Thank you all. Thank you.